up everybody? It's your favorite household Wednesday night shark here to welcome you. I just wanted you to know one important detail about next week. We will be at North Boulder Park. That means me, the shark, and you will be there having a shark-tastic time, playing games, being outside, having a blast, hoping it doesn't snow because sharks don't like snow. So don't come here. Go to North Boulder Park. Be there. Be square. Have a great small group tonight. Can't wait to see it. Figured I'd gather with you guys today and just share a story about kindergarten. I know, way long ago, but kindergarten for me was a traumatic year, we could call it that. Uh, I got dropped off for first day of kindergarten and I was at a K through eight school and I got dropped off first day. Things were going well, teachers were awesome, students were awesome, friends were awesome. Great, you know, we get to the three o'clock hour, we get dismissed from school, we go to after school program, which is just outside in the playground, in the yard. I'm playing, having a blast, having an awesome time with all my friends, and I'm like, this is sweet. I'm hanging out after school, doing my thing before having to go home. Then the five o'clock hour rolls around, and like, there's two friends left, I think, with me at this point out in the courtyard, in the playground area, and well, Come to know it, it's 5.30 and both those friends had left. And I was the last one on the playground with the, we'll call them like the after school uh, care teachers. And so they were hanging out with me from 5.30 and uh, on. And so it gets to be about the six o'clock hour and me being a little kindergarten Kyle starts freaking out and wondering, oh no, my mom forgot me or like, what if this is what kindergarten through eighth is like? She just drops me off and leaves me here for the next eight years, and then I don't ever get to go home to my house until the next eight years before high school? What would that be like? And so I'm freaking out as a kindergartner. I'm crying, they're trying to calm me down, and I cannot be rationed with, and they're like feeling super bad for me because he's like this little kid just crying and thinks he's like just got left there for the next eight years of his life, and that his parents aren't gonna come for him anymore. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was me back when I was in kindergarten. So, I never went back to school from that point on. Just kidding! <laughs> Speaking of not going back to school, uh, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have felt like that the last six months. You guys have gotten frustrated. Uh, sad, maybe happy, you've gone through a whole wave of emotions over the last six months and it hasn't been normal. Um, it hasn't been normal for anybody and I'm sure if you're anything like me, in those last six months, you probably had a similar experience to my kindergarten experience of feeling that loneliness but maybe in a different way. That loneliness of not being able to see friends you love or teachers you love or just simply like maybe it's the the people around you, I was going to say the youth pastors you love, but I didn't want them to come across weird, so <laughs> maybe it's other people around you uh, that you have been missing. It's been, it's been hard for me as well. So it's easy to feel this way, and I've had uh, many of these days during the last six months. What are we supposed to do with this feeling of loneliness? Is there even a way to combat that loneliness? Is there a person in life who ever makes that loneliness disappear completely? And I think like as much as I don't think loneliness completely disappears, I do think there is something really important to be said though about relationships. And I think the relationship that I want to talk to you about today is about my relationship with Jesus and what that has done for me in the times of loneliness. Being able to have a best friend like Jesus and being able to call him my best friend is one thing, but actually being able to believe it and know that I have a best friend who stands by my side no matter what and no matter whether I go to a different high school, a different state, wherever I go in life, because people move, you have to go different places, and life gets disrupted sometimes. But to know that I have a friend and a best friend there who never leaves my side, AKA Jesus, is pretty unbelievable. And it's actually hard to think about how that's even possible when you think about anyone else in your life. It seems impossible almost, right? But I'm gonna prove it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove that actually it's not impossible and that Jesus never leaves your side. Okay, so in the book of Mark, or actually in the book of Matthew, sorry, I'm going to go to the end of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19 through 20, and read it to you guys. 
just real quick. It says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He says, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. If you didn't catch that, Jesus just said he would be there with us until we die and beyond. It's crazy. God must have known we would struggle with loneliness because Jesus addresses loneliness on the top of this mountain. And he must have known loneliness would exist far before COVID even became a thing. I think that's so cool to think about. And I read other verses throughout the New Testament, and he says, I'll never abandon you, and I'll be with you till the end of the age. And I just go, what? How did he know that I would feel this loneliness and there would be a day that I actually needed to hear those words? Maybe that's you right now. Maybe you need to hear those words tonight. Maybe not. Maybe it'll be in a few years from now. But it's been a lifesaver for me to know that he will be there with me to the end of the age. And it's hard to imagine, right? It's hard to imagine having Jesus by my side every time I need him. It's hard to imagine a world like that, having someone by your side every time you need them. Don't get me wrong, family, friends, community, all those things are important. We need those things. He actually says we're not supposed to go through life alone and to actually have those people in our life to do life with. But that doesn't mean we still don't feel those lonely feelings when they're not around and our friends around or our family isn't around for whatever reason. We still can feel that loneliness. So, you may have some of your loneliest years coming ahead, whether it's now, whether it's high school, college, beyond. And you may feel like God isn't by your side. But, especially in these moments, when you feel lonely, know that God is by your side. When you're hurting, when you're feeling lonely, when you're at your lowest points in life, these are the times He wants you guys to come to Him and draw near to Him. He doesn't leave us. He's always there. But sometimes we tend to walk away and have our own path. But come back to Him and be with Him in those times, especially when we feel like we are not with Him anymore. He is with us in those times. Don't give up on Jesus. Why, you may ask? Because He will never give up on you. So don't stop praying. Keep sharing with those around you, especially those around you who are hurting, maybe feeling that loneliness themselves. Share a bit of God's love with them. Share a little bit of story with them about who Jesus is and how he can be a best friend for them. Jesus is an awesome guy and a wonderful best friend. The best, best, best friend I think anyone could ever have. My personal opinion, disclaimer on that one, but I think he is. So imagine if you could walk around in life not feeling some of that loneliness. You will at some point, but maybe you can turn to scripture and hear some of that. Maybe it's some of his promises that he's given to you about how much he loves you and adores you and never will leave your side. That might be what you need right now. Maybe it's someone else in your life that needs to hear that message right now. But if that's for you, man, Jesus loves you and he is by your side, no matter what you're feeling right now. I love you guys, and uh, good message to talk about tonight. I'll, I'll throw out some questions to your leaders, but just thinking about Jesus as your best friend who never leaves your side um, is something I want you guys to hang on to for the night. So, yeah, love you. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week at North Boulder Park. Peace. My name is Megan, and today we are going to be reading from Psalm 139, 13 through 14. It says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. And so if we can believe that about ourselves, that God made us before we were even born, and before 
we even know what our personalities were gonna look be like or what our eye colors were gonna be like he was like I'm gonna make you have freckles all over your face and blue eyes even if you don't like blue eyes and you think green eyes you would like to have green eyes that might be cooler but he made you just the way you are personality looks your heart and soul and all and if we can love ourselves and accept ourselves the next important thing is to love those around us and so we might think oh why does my sister like art and i really like sports but I think what's really cool is that we can try to learn how to love people that have different hobbies than us, eye colors than us, you know, they might have bigger ears and you might think that's kind of weird, but let's just all try to be kind to each other and think about, wow, if God made me perfectly and wonderfully made, he also made everybody in the world perfectly and wonderfully made, and we shouldn't... Um, judge our siblings our friends people on social media we haven't even met before just because of personalities or what we might look like um so i just want you guys to talk about in small groups how there is one thing you could do this week to maybe take a step back and um just accept people maybe you can start with your siblings or friends and then just carry that out into your everyday life and the people around you we hope you guys have a great time in small group and a rest of your week. We'll see you next week. Bye.